that that's why that caveat that the chief justice is is underlining and standing by that there's this distinction between the two is kind of bullshit because <laughs> anytime it, like it, if you if a hypothetical person <laughs> were to become president for their own self aggrandizement just hypothetically, just um, hypothetically. <laughs> wouldn't before before undertaking any act whose end result would be their enrichment, their um, getting away with criminal activity, their, whatever it is, right? Wouldn't their first step in doing that nefarious act be to find some way in which it relates to an official duty yeah. to then muddy the waters and then completely destroy any chance at splitting the unofficial from the official in any sort of fact-finding proceeding? Absolutely. Of course. Of course, that's why it's bullshit. Hey there, welcome to Good Guys Getting Better. I'm Christian Hanley. I'm Aline Boltwright. And Johnny B should be joining us shortly. He is currently on the road with the family, but we'll be calling in a little bit later in the show. Got a big one today, Aleem. Um, we just had the debate between President Joe Biden and the orange man from Queens, Donald Trump himself. You and I had very different takes on this. So let me just preface my, my take before digging into it by saying that the the analysis that I shared with you and John offline before this pod was not so much what I wanted to be true or what mm -hmm. I liked. It was more what my fears were about what other people would perceive, what they would take away from those horrible 90 minutes. But the floor is yours to get started, man. What did you think about the debate? What are you hoping people take away? What what are the next steps for Joe Biden? Well, let, let me just start by saying my my mind was racing and I was I was uh, agitated after wa during and after watching that debate. Uh, well, I mean, the yeah. fact that you put entire essays in text <laughs> message format, I think yeah. I think made that pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, for for the viewers who don't who don't know what happens behind the scenes here, I, I have a tendency <laughs> to be a bit verbose. In in formats that are not intended for people to be verbose, in. <laughs> so, <laughs> it makes for excellent. So, yeah, I, I, I have. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I just you know my my whole thing was this is that when watching a debate, when watching mm -hmm. a political debate, I'm always disgusted first uh, first and foremost. It just it's, yeah. it's it's the most disgusting thing because it's it's in so much not a debate. It's so pointless. And and even even for the candidates that you like and and want to win the election, it's still mm -hmm. it's not compelling. It's not even it's not even that interesting to me. It's yeah. really just performative. That's all it is is performative um, uh, discourse uh, where people get to be on camera in makeup, make faces, say quips and sound bites, and it's nothing substantive. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, the exact opposite is what the American public takes from. Right. And, and that's that, that's the sad part. And moreover, they make it important beyond the the, the simple um, policy discussions that are that are being had. They make it like, oh well, because this person appeared this way, that's meaningful in some way. When yeah. that has nothing to do with the job that they're they're auditioning for. Right. <laughs> to begin with, they're not auditioning to be on a, the stage, you know finding sound bites to say. But either way. So so when I watched this debate, I felt much the same way. Now mm -hmm. when I was watching it, you know, I noticed of course as everyone did that Biden had his uh, you know, pauses and and senior moments and that sort of thing. Um and, you know, but it wasn't it wasn't that that alarming to me because I know who he is and I you know, I know his age and I and I sort of expect that from him. Right. Um and Trump very similarly, you know, I know his mode, you know, and and, and and the funny thing is that, you know, for the, for the viewer, I, I shared with Christian and John, it's like they're both having ex extremely obvious senior moments here, <laughs> but they're just yeah. represented in two different ways. Right. Biden's right. cruise control, I called it. Uh, Christian called it autopilot. Biden's is pause and right. stare and, and stumble. Trump is just word vomit. Right. <laughs> they know, mm -hmm. Say a bunch of things that have no coherence and no relevance. And, and they're all untrue. The, let's the, let's not forget. They're all untrue. All untrue. Exactly. Yeah. So so what 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 alarms me is that the viewer didn't necessarily recognize that. Okay, aside from the the, the lack of truth in what Trump was saying, 
they didn't recognize that he's saying sentences that are not real sentences. They're not right. like it's not eloquence. There's no eloquence there. It's just him being confident in his in his incompetence. Right. right. That's 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 the thing that that has been compelling about Trump to everyone is that uh, he, him being confident in his incompetence makes it appear as though he is competent and right. to some people, to, to, to an untrained eye. I guess. And that's that's the sad reality of, of the American. Uh, the American but, but that's just but, to, so, just to interject here for a yeah. quick second. That was the part that I was trying to express to you over text right after the the debate wrapped up. Was just that everything Trump said was bullshit, right? He lied the entire time, <laughs> but he he lies like he breathes, right? And everybody knows mm -hmm. that. And my concern though was the way in which he delivered the lies, and I wrote about this on Substack mm -hmm. as well. Is that he would. Kind of when he's talking about, for example, in like the tenth minute, roughly, you know, he's talking about uh, the question about abortion and Roe being overturned, and he he mm. does this like concocted fake backstory about the history of of Roe and the jurisprudence, and it's all just crap, right? But to someone who's not going to be a constitutional scholar, a historian, whomever, right? It's it sounds mm. just not crazy enough to be like, okay, he's onto something. And again, I'm being very generous in my saying this here, but and, and then he goes straight for these crazy outlandish points about infanticide in blue cities and blue states, all this crap, which, again, they're all lies. But to yeah, people yeah. who are easily triggered by things that are that emotionally driven to people who are uh, not already all in for Biden, my concern is that he's able to reach them with his delivery on those points, however false they may be. And let me be clear about one thing. I sincerely hope I'm completely wrong. And if I am, I will, I will, glad, I will be glad to just say, like, you know what, I, I got that one wrong. I, I hope that I am. But my concern is that to your point about sort of form over substance, is that yeah, his yeah. form was not presidential, but I called it sort of his best ever impression of a politician. That's what he he gave mm -hmm. in the debate. Biden, on the other hand, had me grinding my teeth from the second the cameras cut away from Jake Tapper and Dana Bash and sh and showed him walking in on the stage. And he's yeah, shuffling he unorthotics. That. He's lo and like, look, I've been the one who's been saying all along, like, we know he's old. That's that's baked into the cake. Who cares? It's not that he mm -hmm. just looked older than Trump, even though it's only an age difference of four years. It was the fact that his mm. physical appearance, his voice, um, and his his command yes. of the talking points didn't just seem old. They seemed feeble. They seemed weak. They seemed yes. Yes. like he was just barely hanging on. And I get the fact that he had events all day that day. I get the fact that he had a cold. Mm -hmm. But my concern in not acknowledging that up front before we dig into the rest and the implications is sort of what happened in 2016, where a yeah. lot of Democrats said, Hillary Clinton's the most qualified person ever, her resume is amazing, all this stuff, and just brushed aside the concerns of people who did not like the Clintons and said, oh, well, that's all just because of the 90s and conspiracy theories about them. And all of that may have been true, and a lot of it was, but by just brushing aside people's concerns and not giving them any credit and saying what you saw you didn't actually see i mean that didn't help yeah. you saw what happened um and my concern here yeah, is that we yeah. need to first acknowledge how badly the night went in order to move on from that night and, and that's that's absolutely a fair point and, and i i do in retrospect uh you know so, so i it, so i guess my point you know the opposite of what your your point was, and that you weren't you weren't looking at it as this is how I feel about it. This, you were looking at it as I fear that this is what everyone else is seeing, and I was yeah, looking more, at it from yeah, the standpoint more of, as a critic yeah. than anything else. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. I was looking at it like this is what I want. This is what I'm seeing, <laughs> and, right, and, I, right. and that was sort of driving my emotion about it. Right. So, so, but, but at the same time, I do recognize you know you're 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 pretty much on, but at, but with with a, with slight caveats, I do feel as though. There were enough viewers who really did sort of understand at least at least that neither one of these per people were performing well. Right. right? That's right. that's that's the that's the thing, and and that, that sort of mitigated it a little bit. I think yep. you know, yes, Biden did 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 poor poorly, but so was Trump. It's just that the Biden's yeah. poorly fed into the narrative that's already been established about him of him it, being old and exactly yeah. right. 
and, 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 right. and Trump, unfortunately, they haven't been able to pin the factual narrative on him that he's an incompetent fool. Like they have mm-hmm. once that, that narrative should have been pinned on him a long time ago, but it, the, mm-hmm. there, nobody's consistent enough to make it plain for everybody. And he showed that during the debate and he's a liar and all those types of things. Right. But it, you know, that, you know, it, 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 it didn't, it wasn't, didn't have that duplicative effect that the Biden's issue had. Um, well, no, but so, I mean, like, you know, yes. and this is something that they got picked up immediately in the post debate analysis on the cable networks, and then the next morning, and then even this morning as well, we're recording this on Monday. Um, that, you know, you had people saying, well, they're, they're graded on two different curves, and Democrats have a different standard, you know, and we saw that after the, um, the primaries in New York last week as well, that, you know, Democrats have one standard, and well, okay, but like, that's not new to Donald Trump either. I mean, that is no, the logical no. consequence of that double standard being held up by the media and by the parties for multiple cycles now. Um, I can recall that yeah, being the case yeah. 24 years ago with George W. Bush, who was an idiot. Um, but there is still this weird thing of like, oh, come on, he's trying. What? Like, I, 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 like, I'm sorry, I was young, but I vividly remember that. There was this entire thing about, like, stop being mean, media and Democrats. Yeah, he's yeah. trying. And it's like, he's a son of privilege running for the highest office in the land. Why should he get any mulligans? Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, this no, is I, just the, the culmination of decades of that. What, what else is new? Because, you know, I heard on Morning Joe this morning and elsewhere, you know, where are the calls for Donald Trump to, to, you know, pull himself out of the race? Everyone's calling for Joe Biden to reconsider. What about Donald Trump? He's a convicted felon. He's a, okay, but yeah. the, the answer to that's easy, yeah. right? He's never going to. We all know that. That's already baked into yeah. the cake. I know I'm using the same expression over and over, but like, that's already a done deal. We know he's never going to have any, any moment of self-actualization. He's going to stay in because that's just who he is. But but I think in, 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 in but that's such a very good point. It's not that those calls should be coming now. They should have come on the heels of that that um, uh, uh, verdict that happened, right? Uh, with with the, uh, the the hush money. So I mean, there's there's no reason why it shouldn't have. Like you know that immediately, and we would have liked to see Republicans come forth and say that, but obviously they're not going to do it because. You know, we know what that party is capable of at this point. But right. at least the Democrats should be saying there is no way this man has yet again demonstrated that he is an illegitimate candidate for this office. You know, it, you know, from the t- time he showed that he was a sexist and a, and a sexual abuser, from the time that he showed right. that right. that he was, a, you know, a, a 1973 that he was a racist. So I mean, to, to the time that he, you know, that he, I mean, he's 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 shown time and again. All the banalities uh, associated with the human being, he Im- he embodies, right? And, yeah. And 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 he, for some reason, it, we're not demanding that this person be excuse himself from politics and representation of a diverse American public. It it just doesn't make sense, right? And and that this is what what troubles me. And this again, it goes all the way back to the very first time he ran for president. So. Um, you know, it, it, it's it, we, we're allowing this double double standard to exist because I don't I don't think we trust that the American public can hold on to one narrative long enough, uh, or, or maybe it's maybe it's the people who, who need to present the narrative can't hold on to it long enough to present it thoroughly and and, and consistently. Like you know, I, I I said when when the Access Hollywood tape came out, I'm right. like, there's th- this should never stop being repeated. Like th- right. there's no Democrat that should speak to or about Donald Trump without first saying, until you apologize for what you said, for promoting what he called locker room behavior, what most human beings would call sexual assault. Right. <laughs> until you right. apologize to everyone for that, not not uh, oh it was locker room talk type. No, you apologize, admit what you did. I'm not going to speak to you or about you. I'm not right. going to debate with you. I'm not going to. I'm not going to consider you a legitimate opponent i i can't because that's not right right but of course we can't do that you know there's no standing yeah. on principle you know? well no because i mean you even look at that so. example and you know i hate to say it but it's true with his supporters and their their fawning behavior toward him i mean there there have been photos come out from from his rallies of not just men but women wearing t-shirts making light of that access hollywood yeah. tape and the actual yeah. words that he used Absolutely. And I, to this Absolutely. day, I mean, 
that was filmed almost 20 years ago. It came out, it went public, you know, eight years ago this fall. I don't know mm-hmm. about you, man. I'm still not over that. That that clip haunts me. I I like because I remember saying to a family friend, first of all, I, I can still tell you where I was sitting when that when that came out. Um, but I remember saying to a family friend, like, I the thought of that at any age mm-hmm. in my life as a boy or man never crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. I mean, just no. to no. The way he laughed it off, like, well, that's just what men do. Are you what? Like, no. Yeah. No. That that's but, but, not that's not a he, thing. That's not a normal thing. But the American and, Republic's the, 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 Amer, the American public's response to that and acceptance of that should tell you something about that, right? You and I, we never thought about those things. But how right. many of, of the men running around this this country uh have, right? How many yeah. of the women have accepted that, right? So what is it? What does that say about us? The people who who will pretend to be Christian, right? You know, and not not you know, <laughs> present company excluded. You know? <laughs> <laughs> not my name. I know what you mean. <laughs> exactly. The people who pretend to be Christian, you know, I, I am devoutly Christian. I believe mm-hmm. in, in in my faith. And, you know, John, when he comes on, he would, he would echo the same. And. I my principles wouldn't allow me to accept that, right? Not right. that people don't make mistakes, because people do make mistakes. You, you you may do that. You may feel that way, think that way, whatever it may be. But to pretend as though that's okay is the problem. Right. It's not that you do it. That's bad enough, and there's there need to be some repentance for that. But the reality is, and and I don't mean that in a in religious sense, but in any sense. No, no, I know you, what you mean. You need Accountability. Yeah. But to pretend as though it never was bad, it never was wrong, it was never indicative of of you being troubled in some way at that time that mm-hmm. is that's that's scary to me and that we well, think accept- about it think about it i mean we we all know on a gut level it's wrong because i mean not just because it caused a visceral reaction but you look at the aftermath the two men who were front and center on that video clip one became president the other one got sent away basically yeah 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 i mean exactly. really really <laughs> Exactly. Um, and, and so that's that's the thing is that we've the only time we have seen this man be held accountable ever has been in a courtroom. Now, why is that? You can't spin. There's actually rules. Yeah, there's actual <laughs> rules of engagement. You can't just spin. There's rules of evidence. You can't just yeah. spin. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, so and that's so, why when I think when we talk about like the debate in the aftermath, my concern is like. Yeah, that's a a principled stand to make. It's a valid point to make, but it's also a very academic point. Like that's what I'm saying mm-hmm. is that the fact that he is never going to be held accountable outside of the legal system, the fact that he is just this raging psychopath and narcissist who's only out for himself, he's not going to mm-hmm. ever. I mean, like, would you even know what it would look like that news day if he were to just come out and say, mm-hmm. like, you know what? <laughs> I'm a jerk. I'm going to go home now. Like, come on. It's never going to happen. And here's here's the difference is that the people who were grimacing after the debate that night, the day after, whatever, maybe some people did have some some ill will towards Biden. I didn't hear or see that. I can't speak to that. What I did read and see, though, were people who were more thinking about it from a strategic standpoint that the stakes are so high, we can't afford to lose to Donald Trump. Right. It wasn't yeah. about, oh, yeah. I hate Joe Biden. No, I didn't. I, maybe somebody did say that. I did not see or read. What I was looking at was the reaction that that performance was bad and we should have a contingency plan. Um, now, once we get to that next question of do we need to have a different nominee, I do not think that's a great idea. I do not think going back no. to the 60s and 70s and having floor fights in Chicago is a great idea. That sounds awful. <laughs> um, and this past year has had enough parallels to. 1968 and other past years that I just don't think we should go back to as a society. But, um, you know, I also don't think that it is realistic, given what happened at the debate, to expect nobody sitting there to not go, hey, wait a minute. Should we at least have the conversation about a contingency plan? Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I feel like... um... You know, the thing about, the, you know, just just getting down to the, the brass tacks of it, so to speak, is that yeah. I feel like 
Biden is capable of doing the job. I don't I don't yeah. think that his 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 presentation at the debate was indicative of his daily motions through life. Like he, you know, when you're at a debate, and, and you and I, I'm sure we've been not only in debates, but we've spoken publicly, and all kinds of things happen there. And and not everybody's good at it. Not everybody's you yeah. know uh, great at debate. But so so it drives you into a mode of thinking and and, and pondering and trying to cap, capture facts and hold on to facts and all these different types of things. That's really it's more of a sport than it is. You know, oh, it an is. actual function. Oh, yeah. no, it totally is. And and today's political commentary really is based on ESPN. Yeah. Not on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. so so when I see when I see uh, Joe Biden in that in that mode, I'm like, all right, I, I know what's going on. The guy's older. His processing is is it needs more time and this type of thing. Right. And he's just not equipped for that mode all the time. He's got to be on it. And he wasn't on it. Clearly. No, he, he wasn't. Gotta be he wasn't. Yes, but but here's the thing, and this is why I think we we have to go back to his debate prep and not Joe Biden as a person, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's separate the two, right? Because Joe Biden as a president, I think, has over delivered, right? Absolutely. We Absolutely. Democrats do not do a good enough job singing his praises. Mm -hmm, and I will mm -hmm. say, as someone who was very lukewarm on him in the primaries and didn't mm -hmm. even think he was the best contender at the start, mm -hmm. he has exceeded any expectation that I could have thought of back then. And then even some I, that maybe I could like wish I had thought of, he still has somehow exceeded them. Right. I mean, like <laughs> we've had, we've had an infrastructure week for how many years? And he's like, boom, bipartisan infrastructure bill, chips act. Mm. Um, you know, he, he, even for the progressive wing of the party, I would say has been far more attentive than anybody would have hoped talking about issues like student loan yeah. forgiveness, right? Things that yeah, nobody yeah. thought that the centrist dude from the nation's credit card capital mm -hmm. would be amenable to, right? He's been way more, yeah. even when he didn't get everything right, he listened mm -hmm. and tried, which is more than can be said for most, I would say. And, and, um, and, that's, and that's, by all accounts, that's in his nature. That's, that's it is. who he's always yeah, been. It's who he right? is, so, right, yeah. right. And he is someone who, you know, I think the more progressive wing of the party raised concerns about who he was in the 70s and 80s, things he was on record as saying, things he did um, with, with Justice Thomas's confirmation hearings, all of these examples from the 70s to early 90s. And they're not great. His track record but going that far back is not great. I also don't think he's acting right now. I think yeah. in his older age, he has really genuinely made some strides in how he yeah. sees people, sees the world. And he is someone who I think acknowledges when he got things wrong in the past and is now making right, doing right by him, by other people right now. Sure. So I, I think that that is more important. His record in the past several years in office is far more important than things that happened 50 years ago or things that he did in 90 minutes the other night. Excellent. But the problem is, is that I'm not just concerned about what's going to happen in the days after the debate, I'm concerned mm -hmm. about how many frames of that debate are going to be cut mm -hmm. into nine by 16 vertical aspect ratio clips <laughs> and shared all over reels and TikTok and yeah. in paid ads targeting undecideds across yeah. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona. You know what I mean? Sure. It's, sure. It is. That is more my concern. So, and so, so just, just yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. No, no, please. Just to go back to the point you made about uh, about Biden and him not acting and this being really who he's evolved to. That's an yeah. interesting point, because, you know, all you need to do is look at any of the older people in your life mm -hmm. and that you encounter. That's the natural evolution of human beings. Right. We soften. Right. We learn. Mm -hmm. We grow. And, and, and when we get up to that age, you're not typically going around calling people names. Right. You're not typically going around, you know, pretending as though you've never had any made any mistakes. That's right. not what human beings typically do. Now, of course, as we see with Donald Trump, people do, do that, right? But that is <laughs> there a, exceptions. That's, that's an anomaly, and that is right. that's a person who hasn't learned very much, right? That's right. a person who hasn't grown very much. But when you learn and grow, you get to more of an understanding. You get to more of a compassion and all those different things. So that's that's a human aspect of it. But but to your point, agreed. This is it, it's going to be tough for him to overcome the imagery that comes from mm -hmm. this, at least, you know. But but so somebody made a, a, a on CNN the day after made a very good uh, recommendation. They said what he needs to be doing right now is being out everywhere on right. everything, doing interviews, 
not not just rallies, but going in, sitting and talking to people and demonstrating his, you know, acuity, you know, and, and, and being alert and awake. And right. it's quite possible that that he's not uh, physically there to do that consistently and well that, I, you know, I, I, I'll leave that. That could be that could be possibly true. Again, that doesn't affect my my uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, belief that he would be a, a great president and uh, continue to be a great president and better than Trump. But the reality is that if that is the case, well, then, you know, then you have to 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 find, figure out a different way to, to approach it. But right. if, if he can actually be out there, you know, at the desk, sitting across from an interviewer, having those conversations with vigor and that sort of thing, then he needs to do that. Because then then you can supplant those other you right. know, images that have been developed that came. From and, that, I think, uh, and I think some folks have made that argument and that that should happen. He should be on the Sunday morning shows immediately afterward. He should be doing everything he can to counteract that image that he put out the mm-hmm. night of the debate. Um, because look, I mean, he his schedule is unbearable to even think about. I mean, there was one yeah. week he went back and forth to Europe twice in the same week and then yeah. went to the West Coast for a fundraiser. Um, I think at half his age, if I did that, I might die. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, so like he he does. He does a an incredible amount of work for anyone of any age. Sure. Again, my point, though, is that there is this snapshot in time showing that, you know, he wasn't up to it. Now, it's not that he's not up to being president. He wasn't up to in that moment doing that thing and putting on that that show, that performance. Yeah. But that's kind of my point about his team is that, like, why, if he was already dealing with a nasty cold and could barely get his voice together um, and was exhausted, why was mm-hmm. he also doing a bunch of events earlier in the day? And why was he overloaded? with these details and facts that no mm-hmm. one's going to really remember. Because all it that, sounded like agreed. when he tried to correlate this question to these 10 other little points that he had memorized, mm-hmm. it just sounded like gibberish. It wasn't. Yeah. I got what he was trying to do. He was trying to make sure he ran through all the different key facts that he had prepped for. Sure, sure. But if he's already that sick and exhausted, why overload him with 10 data points when one zinger would have done? Yeah, exactly. No, seriously, and, and that that was one of my first points that I texted you guys was that yeah, they, I blame his, his whoever prepared him screwed yeah. up royally, and they should be taking the blame. They should be out on front saying, "Hey," and and frankly, I, you know, I'm I'm done with them because how how could you make that mistake? This is literally right. you had one job, right? <laughs> yeah, is, and really one shot at feeble. it. Don't let him look old and feeble. That's your only job, right? Yeah, I mean. It's like, Man. Well, and also, like, you know, your, your point about about Trump and all of his negatives, like, that should have been his opening line was like, you shouldn't even be up here. You're a yeah. convicted felon and a it, sexual abuser, and it, I have I, nothing to say to you. You know, Jake, <laughs> Dana, let's get to the damn questions. And that should have been it. Like, he, his job, he, he had two jobs, right? One was like, he's going to be elderly. That's not going to ever change, but he needed to look strong. Yeah. And he was too tired to do that. So, mm-hmm. sure, point sure. one. Point two, he his other job was to go and just prosecute the hell out of Donald Trump, and he didn't do that. And again, having a million points memorized when one zinger would have done, that was a debate prep problem right there. Like Absolutely. you said, unfortunately, these things are much more like sporting events or mm-hmm. like analysis of sporting events than really about substance. And yeah. even if we were to look at substance, though, if you've got too many points, too many priorities, you don't have any at all. Mm-hmm. He's gone through so many different facts and figures and little points. And it's like, dude, I live and breathe this stuff and you lost me. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 No. And, and, um, speaking of facts and figures. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, so we, we, we spoke for a good solid 15 minutes about all of the negatives that Trump brings to this, this, this society and this conversation, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. mostly we focused on the simple social aspects of, 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 of who he is and what he's done. You know, yeah. but the interesting thing, and and again, when you make this entire case about why he shouldn't be president, you know, and why he shouldn't mm-hmm. even be running, but the his performance, and that, and, and and a lot of let me let me frame what I'm talking about in in this one thing. A lot of times, I feel like we're on this show and on many shows that have a have a progressive spin to them. There's a lot of preaching to the choir, right? Because a lot of times, mm-hmm. people who disagree don't invest the time in the listening to what everything that's being said. And Sadly. it's like they go off and, and ha- have their blinders on and, and their ears closed and, and believe what they already believe. But the, yeah. so there's a lot of people who believe that Donald Trump in some way benefited this country 
when he was president. Like, there's literally people who believe that. And yep. they say, oh, well, my uh, prices weren't such and such high when Donald Trump was president. That's their favorite one. Because the shelves were empty. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, so that's one point. Then the other point is, oh, the economy was doing so well. So here's, here's the, just, just a couple of interesting points that doesn't seem like the Democrats are making consistently mm-hmm. is one, inflation is high because of COVID, right? right. I mean, that, that's, and all the money that had to be thrown into the economy right. because it was screwed up. And the economy, by all measures, before COVID had slowed down from when Obama was president. So yeah. if you really want the facts, he showed his ineptitude as president from an economic standpoint, from a social standpoint, right? from any mm-hmm. uh, any way you look at it, he showed he was not good at this job. But for some reason, people aren't looking at that. They make but up see, any but see, reason Biden they want. did bring that up, but he couldn't make the, the mm-hmm. case forcefully enough. He did sure, say that, sure. but he said it through this whisper. You know, like <laughs> that was the thing. It's yeah. true. It's true. I recall him saying that because I was listening for it. But were mm-hmm. I not, I wouldn't remember that. You know. And it's it's an incredibly important point, but like it, it also is a tightrope for Democrats and for Biden to walk because on the one hand, you can't come across as being either insensitive to people's problems or telling them that what they are feeling isn't real. So you can't just go mm. out and say, well, actually, the economy is better, just that you're not doing well. That That's not going to work. <laughs> but then on the other hand, it is somewhat true because sure. – the the inflation is global. It's not just sure. within the U.S.'s borders, uh, mm-hmm. and in other countries, it's far worse than it's been here. The U.K.'s cost of living crisis was far worse than ours, even though ours was yeah. not good. Uh, and you know, under Biden, that rate of inflation actually slowed and leveled off. Yes, exactly. But that's a very hard case to make, and you have to kind of walk that tightrope between those two sides of it. And but I, yeah, I, I mean, it is a huge hard. problem. And the other thing too is that they, the, to your point about about people believing that about Trump, if you check what they're saying in right-wing media, it's because they're selectively editing everyone's memory, right? They're not saying, sure. are you better off than you were four years ago? They're saying three years ago. <laughs> yeah, because what happened? Because <laughs> what was going on? <laughs> people were yeah. having fights and brawls over toilet paper. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and yeah, so, I, you know, so, but, I, but in, to your point, you said it's, it's it's uh it's it's a hard argument to it's a hard point to make. I don't think mm-hmm. it's that hard to make. I feel like strategically there has to be a commitment to that point, right? You cannot yeah. let off. You can't let off the gas. You know, it, I remember I, I may have mentioned this in one of the previous podcasts, but I remember Keith Olbermann used to have a show, right? And mm-hmm. at, it, at the end of every show, he would say, oh, "Countdown." It, You're talking about yeah, countdown? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he used to say at the end, and, and you know, he, he, Keith Olbermann has his faults, but he at the ev- end of every show, he would say it's been such and such number of days since uh, Mission Accomplice was declared in Iraq. Right, right. And he, right. he pounded that into everybody who was watching his show, knew that mission was not accomplished in Iraq, just so you know. Right. right? He right. made sure that people knew that. Well, it has been, you know, what is it, eight years and or seven, eight years and, and, and one month since uh, Donald Trump was caught on camera admitting he was a sexual assault <laughs> assaulter. So, or saying like, that COVID would go away and nobody would die from it. Or, exactly. Yeah. Oh, anything, yeah. any number of things you can say over and over and over again. But, you know, I, I always thought, though, just, just uh, you know, a little media critic moment here, if you don't mind, Aleem. Sure, I sure. always thought that that point that Oldman would do about how many days since Mission Accomplished was declared on the aircraft carrier. Yes. I always thought that could have had a lot more gravitas if he didn't do it right after he had a segment a segment called Biggest Jerk in the World <laughs> during which he would yell to camera about someone in the Bush administration who he didn't like <laughs> while his producer laughed audibly in the background. <laughs> I think if maybe he skipped that segment and just went into that it, Oh, oh we're gonna have, he, he has he has a he has some sensitivity blindness. <laughs> so, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> there's no question about it. But I but yeah. I, I I appreciated he was he was a strong mouthpiece for a lot of things that would that is oftentimes missing on the progressive yeah. side. But yeah. I hate it when you know those strong mouthpieces you know lose their integrity or lose their their moral high ground as well. You know because that's what bothers me as well. So. 
but and- yeah no and like look i just in terms of the the fallout from the debate i think it's so far so good i mean from what we've seen in the days after it hasn't really moved things against uh biden in any big way yeah. so like like i said before i any of the points that i picked out from the debate i would love to be proven wrong on i don't want to be right on those those yeah. were the things that i was concerned about watching it um Oh, and look, look who decided to show up. Who's this? We have a visitor. <laughs> Johnny oh, B, joining God. the program. Live hey, from the everybody. beach. Hopefully my signal Live is from strong the beach. enough. Your volume's a little low, John. Crank it up. How's no this? No fancy microphone. Oh, he does have the fancy microphone. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got that, that smooth <laughs> bass. The big microphone. <laughs> yeah, big microphone. I thought, indeed. I thought you were going to be slumming it with me down in the the in the, <laughs> the, the three point five uh, millimeter jack mic. I got I got a camera for you too, Aleem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John. I'm not sure that the days that, that today's the day you want to be critiquing anybody <laughs> else's uh, recording equipment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when you're back home, but I don't know right now. <laughs> I, I I will you pull are no in, punches you are regardless in, of my defensive in position. L D. You you are in low definition. <laughs> oh, uh, you were you were oh, given a very oh, low uh, definition. real player. I was going to say I, I stay no. in L D, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying you look very kind of a uh, real player video late '90s. You know, 56 K. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Be right back. How you yeah. doing, man? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. He's so we just about to. Uh, we were just talking about the debate and sort of our analysis of that the past half hour, but wanted to get into the even more pressing news of today, or depressing news of today. Supreme Court, which has been just one scandalous story after another. Now, today has decided that um, apparently if you are elected to just one office in particular in this country, you can do whatever you want, more or less. You become a magical person. You become a magical person, kind of like <laughs> as if you had a divine right, a divine right of sorts to do as you please. Um, and, oh, 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 there's a, a caveat that. Um, Apparently, it's only for official acts, yes. but you can't really inquire into where that line is between official and personal acts, and therefore, in any potential future case in which there's an allegation of criminal wrongdoing against the president, there needs to be this insane fact-finding expedition right up front into whether or not the act itself was, by definition, official or not. Oh, and by the way, pretty much anything a president does is going to at least to some degree involve an aspect at least of some official act that's a, a yeah, magical that's, kind of power it is, uh, it john is. i don't know if you have any initial thoughts on uh this decision well yeah i mean i do i think one i am intrigued to see how official is defined i believe the lower court now will go back and start to flesh out what is official and what's not official. Um, and then presumably right. if it's something that's not favorable to uh, Donald Trump, then it'll go back to the Supreme court and they will invoke that magical personhood of his. Um, <laughs> my, my biggest concern. I mean, I know Aleem is being tongue in cheek here, but as far as our democracy, and our republic is concerned, you have created a magic person, right? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you right. know, you don't have my my concern, Aleem. I mean, the, excuse me, Christian, you and I have been talking about this. You know, my concern mm-hmm. is what if he decides to suspend due process in his official capacity? You know, what if he right. decides to um, suspend the ability to freely speak because he doesn't like what you say? in its official capacity right. under the guise of that it's a threat to the Republic. You know, like the, the problem is, is that, you know, there is no immediate, clear, immediate or clear remedy for that other than 
you know, maybe you have to do a check up front to see whether it's official. But if he's suspending parts of the Constitution that aren't favorable to him, then why not just go all the way? And it's not like we don't have some history in making rash decisions in giving the executive office broad sweeping power. We just need to look back to <laughs> 2001, where we gave George Bush the ability to declare war, but not declare war. You know, like we all right. but said, hey, the executive, because you need this time, or excuse me, because you need to do X to defend our country, all cards are on the table, do what you need to do. Congress let, will just give you the power to do it just as long as you don't declare war. Outside of that, you know, you are you right. are also an element of magical person. So, 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 so let me ask this, guys. So this is the layman talking here. So to your, to your point, if a president decided that you were going to in some way ignore a right to some search, search and seizure or whatever, whatever right that, 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 uh, that a citizen has so you could acquire something from them or so that you could have them do something, and that would clearly, I mean, you could say, oh, well, because I'm protecting people or whatever it may be. That's clearly an official act, right? <laughs> and it seemed like under, under this definition, it would protect it. I mean, so, so I guess my point is, even if it's official, an official act, doesn't make it okay. But in their context, it makes it okay. Well, so, so here's kind of the thing, right, is, is that that's why that caveat that the chief justice is, is underlining and standing by that there's this distinction between the two is kind of bullshit because <laughs> anytime it, like if you, if a hypothetical person <laughs> were to become president for their own self aggrandizement, just hypothetically, just hypothetically. Um, <laughs> wouldn't before, before undertaking any act, whose end result would be their enrichment, their um, getting away with criminal activity, their, whatever it is, right? Wouldn't their first step in doing that nefarious act be to find some way in which it relates to an official duty yeah. to then muddy the waters and then completely destroy any chance at splitting the unofficial from the official in any sort of fact-finding proceeding? Of Absolutely. course. Yeah. Of course. That's why it's bullshit. Yeah. Um and, you know, pardon my French, I'm just not sure that English has any better word for it than that. Mm -hmm. I, it's mm -hmm. it's completely intellectually dishonest in a way that would make Antonin Scalia very proud, I think. <laughs> um it's it's nonsense. And correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I believe that that's actually part of the decision is that the the courts, the lower court is not to inquire into whether and into, excuse me, the question of the former president's intent. Isn't that right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously, this has been for so many different fronts. A, it's been a, a day. busy day, and I have yeah. been trying my best to read and use the Internet to do some very targeted Same. searches for language from the opinion just to start the thought process. Um, but I, I would find it, I would find the question on intent, the intent and or motive of the president being central to determine whether or not it's official or unofficial. You know, so, I mean, I think, I don't think yeah. that you could abandon yeah. that. And if you could, if, if they decided, I mean, I'm trying to on the fly think about, con law but i can't imagine how you would be able to con criminal any kind of area of law where intent is required yeah. put i mean because if we're talking about criminal you know especially uh where scienter is required um you can't you can't just say well an, a critical element of the crime is no longer part of the you just don't have a crime like i just don't know you want to talk right. about scalia i don't know how you would intellectually unravel intent from a crime that requires intent as one of the elements. I mean, you'd have to basically <laughs> do what was done to the second amendment and make the thing <laughs> right. that it's supposed to mean not be the thing that it actually is. This is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, I mean, so, so 
my, my, my concern, or I have several concerns, but one of my concerns is that you're not going to get another shot at this. Uh, this, you know, even let, let's just say all these, the crazy justices go away. Um, you get, you get a set of, uh, actually intelligent justices that, <laughs> well, I, I won't say that, justices who actually are, are not, uh, <clears throat> whose integrity hasn't been impeached. Mm-hmm. You, they get, they get in there. You can't just bring this up again. You actually have to no. have a president who's done something so crazy, like the right. last one just did. And right. then a willingness of that Congress to put that person on trial again for you to approach the stopping again. Now, right. I don't know if that would be it, the case. You might be able to, depending on the makeup of Congress, you might just be able to pass a law. Write a law. That's a law. And, and then and, have and, the that's, constitutionality that's of that tested. Yes. Yes. But you, yeah, no, no. But to, to answer Aleem's question, though, the, that would trigger, you could create legislation that would potentially, at least partially, undo this decision. Right, but the Supreme Court could not revisit the question absent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you'd have to have that same fact pattern have it rise up to the Supreme Court through the. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do think did, that's a reasonable path, though. You, if, if they create a law, um, which obviously you know, this Congress wouldn't do. No, yeah, not not the how current. Roe right. overturned. Wasn't Roe overturned because of a law that was passed? Um, but someone what had what to were bring... the facts that gave rise to the case that overturned Roe? Correct. Yeah, I believe it was a state Some... level law. I have to go back and double check. That was two years ago now. Was... But yeah, but someone had to challenge the law based on the law being applicable to them, or they wouldn't but, have had. Well, that, no, well, my point had, is that's, that's what how I you would bring the, the. Yeah, that's how you bring the question in front of the court, right? Like you create a right, law. Yeah. I mean, which is basically what they did with Roe. You would create a law that would trigger that very specific question. And then Mm -hmm. you would have to deal with it. And of course, you know, I mean, the hope, I mean, like the other thing that we kind of take for granted is that the Supreme Court is going to hear it. I mean, I was looking today, the Supreme Court gets 7,000, 7,000 petitions. It only gives uh, a writ of certiorari to a handful of them every year. Um, So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, there's many obstacles, but I think the real, the real challenge is, you know, like, look, I still think there's very much a path for Joe Biden to win and Congress to stay in the hands of the Democrats. Right. If you do that, I know Christian, I put this in or guys, I put this in the, in our chat. Um, but you know, like that's the next step. I mean, like you get the election, you get both, both chambers of Congress, you got to write a law. I mean, like you have to do something that's going to trigger the question. Mm-hmm. The only problem is that the, the court is still its current makeup. You know, like the real question is when right. do you get new justices on the court or you do, do you do something to radically alter the balance of power on the court. Like right now, there are nothing but really, I don't want to call them all bad decisions, but decisions that are not savory as it pertains to the rule of law, democracy, a republic, and just civil order. Well, so, right, so, I mean... so what, what, was the, what was the ruling officially with respect to the prosecution of Trump. Well, it, this is I not mean, on the merits. Said... Bear in mind, this is not, this, this case today does not settle Jack Smith's case altogether. This is yeah. that they, they fast-tracked one question straight to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court then okay. sat on it until the last damn day of their term and then made the decision public today. But so it's, I mean, what's going to happen next for Jack Smith's case remains to be seen, but this is, this is answering well, one specific question. But, but, but they, so they, they sent back, they said someone else had to determine whether or not it was official act. That was a lower court had determined that. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and if they determined that it was not an official act, then Jack Smith's in the clear as far as prosecuting this. No, no, no. This is what I'm saying is that, and I, again, could be wrong. This is all just coming out today. But my understanding is that for for every factual allegation of a potentially criminal misdeed, you would need to be able to first determine before moving forward that Mm -hmm. that alleged act was not official in nature, but you're not allowed per the Supreme Court to infer the alleged perpetrator, the former president's 
intent in committing said act and merely determine, I suppose, in a vacuum, whether or not it was official or not official. Yeah, I'm saying this is this is the thing that that frustrates me. How what is the definition of official act going to be? Right. You know, like and if you think about the series of fact patterns, if we use the one that he so eloquently used, he being Donald Trump used in the run up, right. I could be walking down Fifth Avenue, shoot somebody and <laughs> they would still vote for me. Well, let's take that hypothetical. Mm -hmm. If he says that I was walking down Fifth Avenue and someone jumped at me and I had to shoot them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was an official act because I was the president and this was an attack on the democ on our on our country so i had to shoot them right is that an official act right you know or what if it's because let's just take it a step further it's because someone did like donald trump slept with someone else's wife and the guy in the mm. heat of the passion wanted to attack donald trump and he shoots him you know same i had to do it right. because it was the good of the country like that i i, I this is where this is <laughs> It, it is hard to fathom that the Supreme Court would let something so loosey-goosey come from off of their pens and out of their mouths. Mm. So, so he, can, but he can still be prosecuted by a state for a, an, an official act, right? There's nothing that precludes no, he, that, right? No. No? No, I mean, the, no, because... So if you're thinking about something like like the Georgia case, mm -hmm. like let's let's hypothetically say that that were to get moved to federal court, hypothetically, right, mm -hmm. um, where he would have theoretically the right to also pardon himself if he were to get back into office as well, which he can't currently do with a state criminal conviction, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, the <sighs> The trouble there, and this is the entire point we're sort of just dancing around right now, is that, and because he's already he's already made this claim before, he would argue that he, as president, called into the state of Georgia to make sure that things were a okay on the election front. That was an official act, right? Mm -hmm. That's sort of also been part of his factual defense in that state criminal case. He's saying that where, where you allege that I called in to twist someone's arm and to corrupt the election, I'm saying I called in as the president to make sure it was on the up and up, right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing, is if you can't really split the official from the unofficial, and you can't inquire into intent, then it really becomes a distinction without a difference, and the Supreme Court is all but giving him a blank check. Mm -hmm. I mean, John, please jump in if I, if I got any of that wrong, but yeah, I mean, I think the only thing that I potentially have issue with is the facts. I mean, the good news is is that there will be a fact from based on what you said, there would be a fact finding mission to determine if it was official or not official as a threshold matter. In the case of Georgia, the I believe the deposition reads that he called in and specifically asked for votes. He said something to the effect of, "I yes. need." 60,000 more votes right now. The question is me, why? Yeah. yeah. Why? Why do you need those? Mm -hmm. What un, in your official capacity? It's a lot different than saying like, you know, notice there were some irregularities. Is everything okay in Georgia? So to speak, right. this is where he can't help himself. And he says, I need X amount of votes because I need to win this election. Mm -hmm. And then if he says like, I need to win this election, blah, 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 state secret, state secret, state secret. You know, that's something different. And that is really where I think the immunity is coming from. So in other words, if he's mm -hmm. saying, like, I need immunity because if we go down this road, I might reveal classified, confidential, whatever information, I could buy that. However, that's not what he's saying. And that's not what the facts say in Georgia. <clears throat> right? So there's still an element of fact finding. And the more that you test this, the more, depending mm -hmm. on the, the quality of the lawyering, the more that you can proactively define what official is and if it gets obviously if it's moved to federal court i mean that's that's the whole piece um well, and right. i think the georgia case is self-contained within georgia just like mm -hmm. the york case was self-contained within new york even though it yeah, was exactly, yeah. actually it had to do with the he wasn't the president yet 
you know, but, you know, there's the loop. Like if you violated Georgia election law, you have violated Georgia right. election law. Mm-hmm. Like this isn't a constitutional question. Right exactly. now, again, if they move it to court, if they move it to a uh, federal court, that's where it gets a little dicey to Christian's how, how point. But, well, also because too, because too, just, just to interject really quickly, in in that one instance, in that case, it's not allegations stemming from what he did after his presidency or before. That was in between when he lost the election or was losing the election and before he left office in January of yes. the next year. Mm-hmm. Right. So in that that that's where in terms of the timeline it, it does get dicey, right? If that were to be but anyway. I, well that can't that, that, that case can't be moved to the federal court. It, it is a Georgia court uh, case, right? No, I think they've already tried to. Okay. All right. Well there you go. The camp I th- I think Trump's team has already tried to. And then here's the problem is that even those of us who read into this stuff all the time, there is such a flood of Trump's criminality, it's hard to keep all the <laughs> keep details up. straight. Yeah. It's just a fire hose every single day. Yeah. So so um so the the the, the Florida case of him, you know, stealing uh <laughs> classified documents. It sounds like we're talking about some kind and, of And as my as my my new favorite member of Congress so eloquently said, stored them in the shitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So but that happened. Guess, that uh, happened after his presidency. True. Uh, that happened after the inauguration. Well, it happened as That's he was moving out of the White House. Yeah. So, yeah. so but he was still president. But, but see, the thing is, he was. Life. He he wasn't the president, and the issue was that he was asked to return the documents, and he didn't. Well, yeah, so that's the criminal act is that he didn't. Yeah, he he after being president was requested to return them and he didn't. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Right. Uh, Well, that is another problem, I guess. So 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 to answer the earlier question, here's the details. Trump did publicly say he wanted to move the Georgia case to federal court. And then his attorneys announced they would not be attempting that after. Remember, (laughs) six months ago now, more than that, nine months after. um. The judge denied Mark Meadows' request to do the same thing. Yeah. And there, too, this is why I'm bringing it up. I'm, I, I swear I know it's tangentially related, but thematically, in that case, too, what they were arguing even before this question was fact-tracked from an entirely different case to the U.S. Supreme Court, what they were trying to argue was very similar. It was that, that they were public officials, not just public, but White House officials acting in that capacity. Yeah. And therefore, the state prosecution was off the bat inappropriate. And, of course, and, that and, was turned you, down. But you, you yeah. made me think of another question, Christian. Is that um, so? Is anyone acting as, um, I guess, an instrument of the president also immune for official acts? So, so if I carry out an order <sighs> based on what the president, who's you know <laughs> determined to be uh, uh, conducting uh, an official act. Um, mm-hmm. So that means I'm immune as well, you know. So, you know, as, there's a concept of that international law that I just can't yeah. think. I'd have to look in the UN Charter, but um, I can't imagine that we haven't at the constitutional level. I don't know if we, if we have contemplated that. And the reason I say that is because a whole lot of his folks went to jail. Well, like, yeah. a lot. I think, and they tried arguing that they did. Yeah. And and I think uh, in any war criminal, any any any, let's just say uh, someone in the military lose flies off the handle and kills a bunch of people, saying, "Well, you know, the president told me to, you know, so I was, you know, I was charged with this responsibility to protect everybody, so I killed these bunch of people because that was going to accomplish that." If I was his, his lawyer, I'd probably reach back and say, "Hey, well, he was con- acting under official orders, so that's an official act," you know. Well, then you get into international law. Like John was saying, and at Nuremberg, it was established that I was yeah. just following orders is not a defense. But that's no, a whole. Agreed. We can <laughs> if, if you subject if you subject that person to international law, but you can always right. say you're well, we're not following. You brought them home you know, and, and, and prosecuted them, right? Right. Exactly. So um, now this is uh, this is this is baffling. Yeah. But but yeah, I know it's and, baffling. And there's there's really there's no. There's no upside to it. I mean, no. John, you were saying in the text earlier, you wanted to talk about the issue of just the precedent it sets 
because Trump's people today have been a little bit too gleeful about this decision. Yeah. My my basic point in the text was that there are a whole lot of people that are celebrating this as a victory of Trump, but don't right. recognize that it's a loss for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's the right. problem. Like in order for him to win, everyone has had to give a little bit of our collective freedom. Right. And that's the problem. Like I said earlier, if he decides because he doesn't like what someone is saying to suspend the freedom of speech, even if it's just a little bit, it starts with just a little erosion here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we, we know how he feels about press that is not nice towards him. Well, we're going to pull the, the CNN's uh, uh, FE, FCC license. Mm -hmm. You know, where you, you pick, you know, like it's a little bit here, it's a little bit there. And right. with the cover of an official act, why not? You know, and people mm -hmm. don't realize that, as we've said before on this pod, we can get on this pod and say what we choose, what we desire, right or wrong. You know, opinion or or just flying off the handle thoughts like we can do it. And we've got no fear of legal repercussion. I'm not so sure that that's the case if he gets elected again. And again, I'm going to go on the record. I'm not so sure that it's a I don't think it's a slam dunk for him at all. I know that we've been kind of looking at the polls and everyone is afraid because Joe Biden looked like a convalescent man during the debate. <laughs> but with that said, uh, I do know that he has restraint and the kind of restraint that you need from right, a leader right. with tremendous amounts of power and putting that power, if not granting more power to someone that has demonstrated that they are wildly irresponsible with it. That's how that's that's how history suggests that you get into real trouble in your country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I think I even if I would have been happy today if the immunity wasn't granted and like, look, I have to make a caveat. I have not read the opinion, you know, like I've been reading what people have said about the opinion. I've read clips of Sonia Sotomayor's very eloquent defense. And this is really where I'm pulling my my thoughts from. But she didn't quite say it like you, but Aline, basically she said that we have created a magical person that mm -hmm. has, and she said it, something to the effect of, uh, we have taken a major step at eroding the fundamental principle that no person is above the law. Mm -hmm. And Boy, she, she used the example that is of, so profound. Of and she was the example of of political assassinations now she yeah. even went mm -hmm. so far as to That's say right. that now at That's this right. point a president could theoretically assassinate their rival claim that it was for an official reason national security uh and that that would be it that'd be the end of the matter and mm -hmm. you know just i know we keep on coming back to this whole official versus unofficial like this is this has been repeated so many times around Earth that it really is astounding that even Trump appointees or self-serving gas bags like Thomas and Alito would go this far. Because yeah. any time a dictator, past or present even, has done something disgusting, they've always said it was to protect their people, to preserve the nation or uh -huh. Uh -huh. some other excuse rooted in security in safety yeah always i mean it, they they it, kill a the, political rival they say that it's because they were you know that person was a terrorist right um yeah. they they put a bunch of thinkers writers broadcasters who hold them to account into a gulag well you know they were fifth columnists who were here, you know, serving the interest of another country and harming our system of government. I mean, it, it's, it's Putin, it's Kim, it's fascists of the 20th century. It is, it is so old and has been repeated so many times that for the United States Supreme Court to bring this country that close to that reality is... Yeah, look, you you both know how much I can talk. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> this came down it, this it, morning, it, and I I 
did, I'm not sure I have the words for that one. Did did um did, so I, I understand uh, Alito and and Thomas and, and and their particular you know lack of conscience, but I I, right. got, I have to believe Barrett and Gorsuch and uh, the other one. <laughs> I, I got to believe that they they got to have some level of embarrassment with this. Did they write? Did they did any of those three write on this? Did they write opinions as well? I believe no. I believe the, the Robert Chief the Justice opinion. Roberts wrote the opinion, and then I believe that um, Comey Barrett did a concurring. Is that right, John? I definitely know Roberts' the this, opinion. This, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with Roberts writing the opinion, which was yeah, like like we said, was interesting. But but I, you know, this is this is. I mean, it's so anti-American. Like the, the whole purpose of mm-hmm. this Constitution was to avoid creating a dictator class, right? I mean, well, I should say the whole purpose, but one of one of the large underpinning notions was that we don't have a dictator. We don't have people who are above the law. And right. it goes to great lengths to establish that as a fundamental concept, right? So why would they think that is in any way, this decision is in any way aligned with the founding? Like, that doesn't make it, 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 it even if you're... It doesn't. You know, yeah, so... so it, 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 this is the, from, from a historical standpoint. Any historical scholar would have to say this has got to be an embarrassing moment in history. You know. Now that being said, I, let me just just toss this in. I don't think um, Jack Smith's case goes away. I think you know. I think he's probably going to still follow through with with the charges that have that don't have to do with the absolute uh, immunity of the DOJ dealing specifically. Um, mm-hmm. And I think any prudent jurist of any level of integrity is going to say, yeah, these clearly were not official acts. <laughs> you know the other stuff. You know the, we can't count on the Supreme Court, unfortunately, to do that. But um, I think you know uh, who, the court they they send it down to. I imagine because before it went up, it was an, it was a nine zero decision to, to that it, that it, that he was not immune, right? So if they're right. sending it back down to the D.C. Court of Appeals, you can pretty. I think you should be able to expect that they're going to say no. Yeah, <laughs> he's not immune from these other things. So. So I, I don't know. So yeah, I, I'm 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 optimistic, but again, the timing is the problem now. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, it's that's yeah. Even with that case, it's not going to be resolved or resolved. It's not going to go to trial yeah. before the election. It's already we're already in July. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yep, I'm so. sorry. I mean, I I I can I can analyze the finer points when it comes to the question of unofficial versus official acts i can get into um you know the the ins and outs of the news coverage on this today that i've been reading and listening to throughout the day uh i when it comes to the big picture it really is difficult to get my arms around what this will mean long term um because right now from from today until this is overturned either by legislation or subsequent decision, which might take decades. Um, basically, the only thing holding a president back from being a, a outright criminal is their own personal self restraint. Yeah, that's right. Of either party. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean like, this is tailor made for Donald Trump. I mean, the facts that gave rise to this case would not have happened in any other person's presidency up until now. Um, but, but I mean, and that's the thing that (laughs) the people applauding this don't really get what's good for the goose is good for the gander. This rule is ruling is going to apply to anyone who holds that office, but they, but including starting right now, Joe Biden. Yeah. yeah, Cause, cause right. If if, if Biden has absolute immunity and with, for his dealings with DOJ, then he actually could weaponize the DOJ if he wanted to, like they're claiming. Oh, and right now apparently has carte blanche to do so. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's absurd, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, and, you know, this whole era is just the era of projection and I, I'm not a fan of pop psychology. I promise I'm not, but like, this is just every single thing that Trump and his cronies accuse everyone else of doing 
is just simply what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, that's it. I mean, like well, they literally now happened. have a Supreme Court decision mm -hmm. that will empower their guy, should he, heaven forbid, get back into office, mm -hmm. to do whatever he wants and to have. I mean, let me just back up. This country, to begin with, basically has had almost no mechanisms for making or holding past leaders to account, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There are democracies around the world who have held past leaders to account. And it's not even just smaller ones or newer democracies. I mean, the French Republic has prosecuted, I think, two of the past half dozen presidents, hmm. um, or at least investigated and prosecuted one. I need to double check that. Um, but, you know, we have impeachment, which we've already now proven in the last presidency is really only as effective as one's congressional majority is and therefore not very effective at all in the present day. Political popularity. Uh, and, right. And and now we have this ruling today from the Supreme Court. So, I mean, Bush never faced anything other than people yelling at him and throwing a shoe at him for <laughs> lying to the American people and starting massive wars that, that killed and maimed tens and hundreds of thousands of people. Um, so, I mean, forget that. That's, you know, that's never going to happen. It never was going to to begin with. Mm -hmm. But but to the extent that we even had any theoretical mechanisms to hold a past leader to account, now, I mean, what? As long as you, as long as you win 270 electoral votes, <laughs> you can be corrupt. You can be murderous. You can be, I mean, on the corruption front, don't forget too, the Supreme Court 10 years ago in the McDonald decision, and then again in this past term, has basically from the bench legislated corruption out of existence, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now there has to be a legitimate quid pro quo. You have mm -hmm. to prove that the official act was done in exchange for a gift, mm -hmm. a precise gift, Act A for gift A, <laughs> right? Not just a general ongoing retainer of payments to get a, an official on your side doing your bidding on that sort of ongoing basis. That doesn't count anymore. That's just lobbying, right? Um, and now if a gift to an official is made after the fact, <laughs> that's now a gratuity. Yeah, It's not even a bribe. It's a gratuity. So you've got a Supreme Court on which at least one member, but I, that's not the only one, but at least one member uh, flaunts the bribes he regularly receives and the lifestyle he's able to lead because, thanks to those bribes, um, deciding that public corruption basically doesn't exist in America by defining it out of existence, and that if you reach the highest of the highest office of the land, not only can you be corrupt and criminal, but you can't even be held to account for it after the fact. Hmm. Don't forget yeah. Citizens United. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this is what started it all, right? <laughs> you want to talk about magic, first... magic personhood. Yeah. Magic oh, yes. personhood. <laughs> right. Right. Artificial right. magic person. Artificial personhood. Right. <laughs> Corporations are people, my friend. Yes, indeed. Mittens Romney. Mittens himself. Yeah. I, I yeah. mean, yeah. This, this, so much of this falls on the, uh, on the Roberts Court. I mean, now you really yeah. just look back at the Roberts Court, and for a few short-term legislative wins, how does John Roberts go down in history? I mean, I don't know if that's a question we can answer right now, but he's no. stacking up. Just this <laughs> wild, wild string of opinions under his watch that, mm -hmm. you know, have pretty aggressively dismantled any safeguards. What was that, that, that list I sent out? Overturn right, Roe? Yeah, you, did. You, yeah. you should read that list. Read that yeah. list. That's, read that's it, just in the it, last yeah, two please. years. This Supreme yeah. Court has overturned Roe versus Wade, 50 plus years of precedent. Overturned Chevron, 40 plus years, 40 years of precedent. Overturn yep. affirmative action in some cases, 60 plus years of precedent, allowed cities to criminalize homelessness, uh, and and as of today, has made a magic person of the president. <laughs> so all this because one man became president in 2016. Thank mm -hmm. yourselves, conservatives, quote unquote. I mean, it's it's 
John, to your point, I mean, the the only thing I've read about that recently has been um, Robert Reich saying that this guy will go down as the the worst justice since Tawny. Um, <laughs> It, it, it's possible. I'm not a Supreme Court historian, but I can't think of any anyone worse. I mean, I think what I find disgusting about Roberts is that he he really epitomizes this whole class of I don't even want I don't want to say conservative jurists because they're not conservative, right? They're there to to execute a mission set out by corporate interests and um religious zealots they're not conserving or preserving anything um but but from him under him and george w bush all the way to the trump appointees um he really epitomizes this whole thing of well if i say something crazy but in a calm low flat tone and seem like a nice guy i can perjure myself in front of the united states senate get a job thanks to that perjury and then keep it. Mm. Mm. And that's what you had, especially with the Trump appointees who make no mistake. They were sent there to overturn Wade at uh, Roe v. Wade for the, the culture warriors and to overturn Chevron for the oil and gas corporations. And they lied to the Senate saying that they were, you know, believed in stare decisis, believed in precedent, mm -hmm. um, were conservative, were reserved, were restrained, said all the right buzzwords, and one decision after another. And, and these cases, I mean, like, this is what people should really understand, where the legal and political, where that line has never really existed, is that whether you look at the Dobbs decision that overturned Roe, which, by the way, I, I double-checked, it was based off of it was planned around a Mississippi law that set a certain weak uh, ban on abortion mm -hmm. that then triggered the the um, litigation all the way to the Supreme Court. Excuse me, um, but these cases don't just show up because there are controversies that happen in our society, and then someone feels compelled because they felt wronged, and then it gets moved up organically through the system to reach the Supreme Court. Like no. On the one side of the equation, there are people who are being pushed onto the Supreme Court who are ideologically driven, who are under 50, who can hold down these lifelong tenures to decide cases in the way that their benefactors would like. And then on the other side of the equation, in the states, you have legislators, but also these nonprofit organizations that are also ideologically driven that make these cases happen, whether it's affirmative action, abortion, regulation, um, they cause the facts to come about at the right time when the right people are on the bench so that they can proceed all the way up to the Supreme Court to get a, a ruling that is not based upon law or precedent, but upon them getting the outcome they desire. And, you know, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse from Rhode Island, he screams from the rooftops about this every chance he gets. He puts on presentations. Um, <laughs> he does he like presented it. to the House, a House committee, I think it was two weeks ago now, uh, where Jamie Raston of Maryland and AOC put on a hearing about uh, basically having to have legislation that would limit gifts to Supreme Court justices the same way any other public official would have uh, a limit on gifts they could receive um, from people and groups. So I, that, that's the thing is that this is not just happening. Like, yes, the election of Trump was tragic. And that is what ultimately caused this, this swing in the Supreme Court. But the timing of these cases, since they came into office, it, it's not organic. Okay, mm -hmm. this has been, this has been in the works since the 1970s. And we're now playing catch up slash dealing with the repercussions of that a half century later. But this has been very deliberate by a network of of conservative interest. Again, I don't want to say conservative, but hard right interests that are working for things like social issues, fighting abortion rights, women's rights, rights of minorities, religious, ethnic, Clinton racial. 
a vast right wing conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which she was which she was mocked for, but it's been thoroughly documented since she said that by all different kinds of scholars looking at political donations, looking at the composition of the courts. Uh, this is not I mean, it's it's not a conspiracy theory. It's the Powell memo at work right before he became a Supreme Court justice, setting out how conservatives could effectively rule the country as a political minority by manipulating its institutions and, and entrenching certain individuals to to legislate from elsewhere other than congress from the bench from academia from the media and that's what we're living in right now i really yeah. don't have anything else to say about this like <laughs> there yeah, yeah it's it's, there, it, it's it's action like at this point like the the only and most powerful, not the only, but the most powerful tool we have right now is the vote, right? And mm -hmm. I think that it's not settled that because Trump has some favorable court rulings that that by any way ensures that he's going to be the president next term. It just ensures that mm -hmm. if he is the president, he can write things in the way that he wants. Yeah. But there's right. a couple of things that I've seen in the last two hours. Uh, part of it while just not moving in traffic. <laughs> um, <laughs> one, uh, you know, one of my, in one, another one of my group threads, uh, the question was asked, like, you know, if, if Joe Biden loses this election, is it the greatest choke job in history? And I was like, Absolutely not. The greatest choke job that I've seen was Donald Trump losing in 2020. <laughs> like people don't realize it's like he has lost. He's done way more losing than winning. Mm -hmm. Like oh, yeah. his wins were winning the election and getting three people on the Supreme Court. <laughs> Those are wins you can't take away from him in every right. other avenue that he has gone down. He has either lost or caused people to lose mm -hmm. like it's not mm -hmm. big news now but getting a trump endorsement probably means you're going to lose whatever you're running for well you'll win like your you'll win cool. your gop primary and you'll lose your general election yeah what? because you you are running on a sadistic personality mm -hmm. that doesn't right. have anything politically of substance other than the fact that they exist in a place of prominence right like that's just not right. good enough so I um you know just interesting point and I and just a, a thought I it came over uh came over me as we were talking about this and I sort of felt the energy level at least my personal energy level just drop right it felt sort of a sobering mm -hmm. sort of emotion come around and then you then you mentioned the the Tani court um Christian and I thought about it as like yeah the Dred Scott decision and all that and how bad that was and I you know I just I I, I was thinking to myself man you know how consequential the courts are and how consequential mm -hmm. our politics are, right? And you think about going back to 1857 or, you know, uh, it may have been 58 when, when Scott was, the decision was made. That actually defined African Americans, like John and myself, right, as not citizens, <laughs> not worthy of being treated as citizens of this country just have just from having defend, uh, you know, descended from slaves from enslaved people excuse me and and that fact is so lost on people i i bet you if you told if you said dred scott decision to a hundred um 25 year olds right now probably most mm -hmm. of them wouldn't even know what you're talking about but it was something that was extraordinarily consequential in our lives and mm -hmm. that factors into the apathy in one in one bin or the lack of of importance placed on what's being discussed today with respect to Donald Trump and these elections and, and the power that he would wield if he found his way into the highest office in the land again. That's the reason why this is a close race. That's the reason mm -hmm. why these are these these are problems that we that we, we having today. Is because people do not understand the significance of this. They think it's funny, right? 
I have oh, seen, they do. They think it's hilarious. I, I've yeah. seen time and time again, post after post on social media, people laughing at that debate, right? Oh, ha ha, two old men, ha 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 ha. No. This is, None of this this is, is funny. Ex- existential. Like, this is people don't get. And, and, and you, the, somebody would say, oh, it doesn't, uh, they're all the same. They're all bad. It, no. <laughs> like, you don't get well, it. One thing about that, it's the they're all the same, they're all bad thing is. Be- before this new class, before this age of Trump, I would have said that that was the – that cynicism is what corruption needs to thrive. Sure. Right? People being cynical and thinking they're all the same is all that it takes for corruption to thrive because if you can't think critically and you're not going to hold anybody to account because mm-hmm. you're exhausted of it and think that they're all the same, which they're demonstrably not, mm-hmm. uh, then – you know, that's where somebody can get away with anything. And now we've gone from corruption to, by today, like hypothetically, assassinations. Yeah. Political violence. And that, it, and let's actually be clear about one thing. The assassination point that Justice Sotomayor brought up, that is still technically hypothetical. Mm-hmm. Political violence, though, is not. No. That's already happened. Absolutely. That's why we're here in the first place. Absolutely. Because of what happened on January 6th, mm-hmm. right? And that was violence. We saw people's fingers and faces being crushed in door jams and people being all but harpooned with killed the flagpoles yeah. and killed well yeah. one one person did have a heart attack but being well, harpooned and being hit with american flagpoles and and well the woman tried to jump it, through the jump through the glass and and got shot and then got shot yeah. right yeah what's her name um Bob- Bob- i can see her Bob- face Bob- but yes i think Bobbitt yeah. was her last name babbit, babbit. yes babbit. yeah Ashley um babbit. so that's this is this is real it's not hypothetical at all anymore yeah let me just add it's it's not yeah you know please please i mean like the the i just want to go back to dread scott for just a second and i would encourage all of our viewers all of our listeners there is so much interesting history around dread scott and if you want to talk about corruption and intermingling between the executive office and the supreme court you can go look mm-hmm. at the letter that the then president wrote to the Supreme Court trying to get uh, trying to exert influence on the decision or trying to figure out what the decision was going mm-hmm. to be in advance of its release. I mean, like this is not new. What yeah. people need to realize and the great deception, I think, of the Republican Party is to make you think that you and your vote don't matter and that it's already a foregone conclusion. Donald mm-hmm. Trump's strategy is to make you think it's a foregone conclusion that he's inevitable. And you need to mm-hmm. not just fight that temptation. Like, it's not even a fair fight. Like, he's already won. I said it earlier. He's done way more losing than he has winning. Mm-hmm. Right? right? And if you just don't give in to the, the cynicism, like, you still have to go vote. You know, like, you still mm-hmm. have to, you know, go out and vote. Like, the thing he doesn't want you to do is vote. He actually tells his voters... And his followers don't vote. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, like it, it's I'm not I'm not making this stuff up. This isn't partisan, mm-hmm. you know, just talking. I, I'm telling you what he says. So right. just to all of our and and Aleem, I, I hear you, too, on that opinion. One, it didn't last very long because I mean, even I'm just looking here at Wikipedia. It's actually a beautiful. I'm just going to read this. This was from at the time the Republican uh, platform at um, their their official platform. It says the new dogma that the Constitution of its own force carries slavery into any or all of the territories of the United States is a dangerous political heresy at variance with the explicit provisions of that instrument itself. With con- contemporaneous exposition and with legislative and judicial precedent it is revolutionary in its tendency and subversive of the peace and harmony of the country hmm. like this well wasn't <laughs> just some people just taking it on the chin yeah saying right. oh you know well dred scott let's take it no hmm. like and obviously a couple of years later hmm. we were at war yes you know but the point is like to just think that you just kind of take it and you know we sure it it sucks but like that that also to kind of take that would be anti-American. Like it's anti-American. The opinion to me is anti-American. The response that people have that are celebrating is anti-American. Yeah. But it would also Completely. be anti-American to say, "Ah, oh, let's just oh, we there's nothing go. we can do. Get, get right. out of here." Yeah. Like, no. That's, that's not yeah. who we are. I, I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate that, John. That's that. That's 
that that brings me a little bit out of my sadness to hear that that, that opinion because we do have to do something, right? Yeah. Well, that that opinion you reading it aloud does make me want to bring back both civics and English composition classes in American schools. Absolutely. Come on, man. Um, Come on, man. <laughs> man, that not yeah that not only the, how well written that was. I mean, this this this, this the, the 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 poetic <laughs> you know writing. You know, <laughs> I just appreciate it so much. That's lost. All right. Well, so there's been. Almost no positivity in this, aside from <laughs> well, rueful, oh, rueful laughter. Um, but I, I do want to end on not a light note, but um, you know, John was just saying right now, lying down and taking it and doing nothing is just as un-American as the decision <sighs> passed down today itself. Come on, come on. So come we on. cannot just say this is done. Um, we have as a nation not just arguably, but definitely had bigger setbacks than this. You just mentioned the Dred Scott case and still leapt forward within 10 years of such bad things happening. Um, we see that throughout American history, even just in the past hundred or so years. So lying down and taking is not an option. Um, and, you know, other than that, um, Gents, I know that we have 4th of July coming up this week, um, and we're still going to be celebrating. Mm -hmm. And we're still going to be having time with family and being thankful for the good things. And I would hope renewing our dedication to stay in the fight and to not accept, I'm going to say again, bullshit like this. Um... But, John, if you would, I, I know that you and Aleem have both brought this up in earlier pods. Just about the fact that you're not going to give, you're not going to cede any ground to right-wing assholes, almost all of whom are white. You're not going to cede any ground and give them any kind of special position in terms of patriotism that when you celebrate the 4th of July and you celebrate the things that make America great, you feel just as every bit a part of that story as anybody else. And what listeners may not know or may have got bits of from the pod is that since you and I have become dads, especially you have really incorporated my family into your family's 4th of July traditions. And that's meant the world to me. Um, and, you know, it's formed a lot of the core memories that my son will have for the rest of his life. And so if you, if you would mind in, in closing, just sharing your thoughts, aside from all the good food, which we, we can mention too, we <laughs> make amazing food. Um, but you know, just what, what this day means to you and what you're looking forward yeah. to. Well, first off, I, um, I'm actually fighting back tears a little bit, um, because, uh, both of you, um, kind of an unexpected, unexpected brotherhood in adulthood, um, and spending time with you on the fourth as you put last year, as you wrote last year, just enjoying each other's company. You know, there isn't anything yeah. at stake other than eating and enjoying life and spending time together. And ironically enough, it's that leisure, you know, it's that freedom, it's that ability to step away that is also so critical to our lives as Americans, is so critical mm -hmm. to the 4th of July. I mean, my thought and my kind of my final take um, is my ancestors were slaves in this country and their immediate descendants, some of whom I knew, like my grandmother, made a conscious decision at some point to look at the upside that this country has rather than the downside, rather than the history of violence and savagery and greed and pass that on down to to me and to us and it really isn't a matter of skin color right you know like 
so often it's lost that, you know, if you're white, then you are predisposed to aligning with things that are going to support white interests. And that's just not the case. And there are people like you, Christian, that are about, you know, colorblind is the wrong word. I think um, people aware is the better way to put it. You know, like you have this ability to understand yourself and people in a way that is honest and thoughtful and rigorous and loving. And that also, to me, is a really American thing. You know, like you've got that if we talk about leisure. I mean, you, you've got the ability to do that. So, you know, what the fourth means to me, it is absolutely a time of, you know, reflection. And like, look, my grandfather fought in World War Two. My uncle fought in Vietnam. You know, Chanel's parent, uh, grandfather fought in the Korean War. You know, or maybe her uncle fought in the Korean War. You know, like these are people, conscripted or not, that made a decision to go fight a war in a country that wasn't theirs and still continue to look at the upside of this country, right? So as we, on this somber feeling day, as we turn towards the 4th of July, what's the upside? And the upside is... We are better together than we are apart. And what we do together has an impact, not just on this country, but it has an impact on the future. And I, I don't think that's hyperbole. We've talked about it in the podcast. It's everything from the environment to the economy to holding our commitments to everyone that is a part of this country. Whether you've come here as an immigrant, whether you were born, whatever your circumstance is, what the United States stands for, what our Constitution, what our Bill of Rights stands for is so radical in its, in its gesture to history that it, it's got to be worth fighting for. And for it to go down just because someone that is insecure and afraid and tyrannical, we're stronger than that. We're better than that. So I know I'm all over the place, but. And to put it easily, man, I love both of you. You guys are like brothers to me. And uh, happy fourth. Aleem, I'm going to have a couple of ribs for you, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Chris is making, making like 6,000 6, racks. Uh, no, actually, I need to start defrosting those. I um, I got to figure out how many I can fit oh, in this smoker. Oh, throw a salmon fillet like on the grill sounds. for me. <laughs> we'll go. All right, Appreciate guys. You, thank you.